Welcome, thanks for joining us. Um, so today we're gonna to discuss the registry of research data repositories with the data. And it's gonna get a bit hands-on in the end. <laughs> so uh, hello, welcome again, everyone. We're happy that you're joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. We're very, very thankful that we can participate in the uh, Gateways Conference. My name is Nina Weisweiler. I'm working for the Helmholtz Open Science Office, and I'm also responsible for the outreach and community building of the Read Through Data CARIF project. Um, today, me and my colleagues, Ruben Schabinger, Dorothea Strecker, and Yi Wang, will introduce to you Read Through Data, as I mentioned already, the registry of research data repositories. Um, Ruven works for the KIT library at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. He's also head of Re3 Data's editorial board. And Dorothea and he work for the Berlin School of Library and Information Science at the Humboldt University in Berlin. And they are just like me, part of the project CARIF, which stands for Community-Driven Open Reference for Research Data Repositories. Um, I'm going to kick off the session today with a general introduction to Re3 Data. Um, and the CARIF project. Then Ruven will follow explaining to you in more detail how the Re3 data service works and how a good repository entry can look like. And finally, we will switch from information input processes to output with Duro and Yi, <clears throat> who will give you an example of how to use the Re3 data API. Re3 data, um, that's a global index covering currently um, over 2,700 entries for repositories. The registry website went live in 2012, and you can see that the number of index repositories has increased steadily over the years here, thanks to the reliable work also of our editorial team. Research data covers all academic disciplines, and it represents um, repositories for the permanent storage and access to research data. The service is primarily aimed at researchers, but also at funding bodies, publishers, and scholarly institutions, just as well as related infrastructures. It promotes a culture of sharing, better access, and increased visibility of research data, thereby also supporting the realization of the fair data principles. I guess you all have heard of them. Um, so in case there are any data repository operators present right now, I would like to encourage you to visit the Read Data website and to update existing entries or suggest any missing ones. Um, Research Data has started as a project which was funded by the German Research Foundation, the DFG, involving the Humboldt University, the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, and the Helmholtz Open Science Office. And in 2000, 2013, the service merged with DataBib, which was a similar data repository registry located at Purdue University in the US. Then since 2015, it is a data site partner service chaired by the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Purdue. And in 2020, the current project with Data Cora started again with funding from the DFG. So at a conference um, that is specialized on science gateways, I think it seems necessary to discuss what kind of services we actually index in with Data. Um, according to our metadata schema documentation, the term repository is defined as a subtype of a sustainable information infrastructure providing long-term storage of and access to research data. This is basically our working definition, um, and we are aware that other interpretations might exist of the term. So in a narrower sense, I would say that re 3 data is not a classic type of science gateway, um, but partially fulfills respective functions, such as providing a portal that allows its users to access various data repositories and information. We use three basic criteria to decide if a service will be added to research data. So to be registered, a repository must focus on research data, obviously, it's in the name, <laughs> be operated by a legal entity with an organizational framework that provides sustainability, such as, for example, library or a university. It has to clarify access conditions to the repository research data and provide terms of use. Um, and to distinguish uh, different, different types of services, um, we also use these two, um, these two uh, criteria or um, descriptions, um, which are part of our metadata schema. 
So the infrastructures which are listed in V3 data can be described as data, uh, data providers and or um, service providers. Data providers are repositories that store or offer research data and its metadata, ideally exposing metadata via inter inter interfaces, sorry. And the service providers harvest and aggregate the metadata of research data from data providers. Um, now let's have a look at our project work in Re3 Data Forest. Um, the main project goal here is to further develop and enhance the Re3 Data service to position it as the central reference for research data repositories. And to reach this goal, we update and expand the metadata schema. We um, develop further options for automated data exchange, ex uh, for example, to also um, automatically include certification information from organizations like Cortrust Seal. Then furthermore, we plan to build new widgets and API features and develop additional functions to support monitoring and recommendation of repositories. And all these activities are carried out in orientation on our recently published conceptual model. The CORREF project runs for three years. You can see the project partners here. These are actually the same partners like the first project, except for DataSite, which is now also part of the project. And um, please have a look at our project blog if you are interested in regular updates. All right, then let's have a short look at our new model. Um, last year, we conducted a survey and we also organized three workshop sessions with a group of relevant stakeholders. Um, with the goal to collect different use cases of Rethree data and identify potential service gaps. Based on this preliminary work, a conceptual model for user stories was generated, which will help our team to recalibrate Rethree data according to current and future needs of the community. The model also describes the history, governance, and current technical infrastructure. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, of Rufi data, so you, you get like a general overview of the service. During that process, we could identify four overarching use case groups that are listed here um, and that fall under search and discovery, reusing Re3 data, metadata, administration of the metadata, and referencing. And if you're interested in further detail, details or in the actual use cases, then please go ahead and download um, the model on also the report of the survey and the, the workshops. Um, of course, the slides will be made available uh, later via Synodo. But I think I also um, I will also post some links in the chat so you can already have a look there. <clears throat> At the core of the Re3 data service lies its comprehensive metadata schema, um, which provides 42 categories to describe the data repositories. This includes general information such as name or discipline, as well as information about the participating institutions or data standards. Uh, Rufen will focus on this topic, so I will spare you further details for now. <laughs> um, just a quick look at our um, revision, our latest revision of the schema, which was in August. Um, and also it was basically like a first measure to implement the use cases described in our model. Um, the CORREF project uh, published the, the schema and um, besides some smaller adjustments, uh, it introduces two big changes, which are um, the addition of a profile field, as well as an expansion of the descriptions of a repository certification status. With this new profile field, uh, we intend to develop an option to identify subsets of repositories indexed in Refree data. Um, and they will be predefined by a third party based on community developed criteria, <clears throat> such as the identification of repositories that enable fair data. In this context, we have already worked together with DataSide and the Enabling Fair Project. Um, sorry, the Enabling Fair Data Project driven by COPDES, which is a coalition representing the international earth and space science community convened by the American Geophysical Union, AGU, and also with the FAIRS FAIR project. Um, here, it's really important um, 
uh, to to uh, say that we are not creating such subsets ourselves. Actually, we don't want to define those subsets, but we would like to. Uh, we will rely on trusted trusted expert communities that can set up the profiles um, in cooperation with us, and um, each of them will be defined by a URL that outlines the selection criteria. So and then also you can see what's upcoming here towards the end of the project. There will be another revision, which will be even bigger of the, the metadata schema. And we will um, map refer data metadata to the schema.org um, language and implement RDF technology. So that's the last slide from my part. Um, one more aspect regarding the quality and transparency uh, topic. Um, also part of the CARF project. Um, and to make the, the quality assurance of research data performed by research um, by, by repository operators more visible, um, members of the CARF project, especially Doro and Yi, who are here, um, conducted a survey on this topic with a sample of repositories listed in Refute Data. And we are really grateful that we received uh, 330 completed responses. Currently, the analysis is ongoing. So once it is complete, an anonymized results will be made available to the communities, of course. And they will also play an important role in revising Refu Data's editorial process and help us build a model of trust for metadata editing. Um, such a model shall facilitate the administration of Refu Data metadata via trusted third party services. In addition, we also want to implement authority files like ORCID for persons um, and the ROAR for organizations which we already have partly within our metadata, but um, yeah, that will be expanded. Okay, then I'll pass over to Ruben and um, look forward to your questions. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. So thank you, Nina. Um... I am, my name is uh, Ruben Schaubinger. I work at the KID library in Germany and I'm the coordinator of the re 3 data editorial team. And now we want to have a closer look at all the properties uh, of re 3 data and how the whole service is functioning. Next slide, please. So how um, can you get a new repository in? It's very easy. Maybe you have don't uh, have, have, haven't got much time. So these are the minimum, uh, Properties you have to fill in, of course, the name of the repository is important, the URL, small description, and a data license. So that's it. Um, that is all the minimum required information to uh, get you into the pool. Next slide, please. But um, if you are a repository operator, is the slide moving? Sorry, it's now. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so if you are a repository operator or have uh, more insight into the repository, it would be wise to give us as uh, much information as possible. So as uh, you heard that there, that there are 42 properties, um, I will highlight some of them in, in this talk. Uh, in this example, it's uh, the data repository Pangea. It's a German repository but with international focus on geosciences. You can see that in all the subject classifications. Uh, this is the DFG subject classification from a German funder. Um, we recently published a blog article on that subject. I will put it in the chat if you are interested. Also, it is uh, always possible to add keywords, uh, like in this case, uh, lithosphere or more precise um, keywords or very broad keywords. So to um, yeah, to add value to the subject categories. Um, in this case, you'll see that uh, the whole repository is certified by Core Trust Seal, so that is valuable information maybe for a researcher to evaluate the trustworthiness. We also try hard to um, put in as many IDs that we uh, that we can from other services, like in this case from fair sharing, but also open door and such, so that we can link from one repository entry to the another repository entry. 
of course, there are many types of um, repository uh, of repositories. Um, in this case, it's a disciplinary one, um, but there are many more like institutional or national. So um, that is uh, available information that we index here. And this is um, all included in the general information tab that uh, will be visible uh, on our front end. Next slide, please. The next tab is called institutions. Uh, and this is um, a summary of all the institutions that are involved in hosting or managing the repository. So in this case, it's the Helmholtz Center for Polar and Marine Research in Germany. You can see the raw ID here. So um, it's listed and we will um, add a country here. So not to be mistaken, a repository don't really have a, a land or a country, so we index the, the country responsible institution. So um, because a virtual service is virtual. And we also try to distinguish what is the um, responsibility type of this institution. So is it just managing? Is it providing technical support? Is it funding? And in this case, it's kind of a mixture. It's general and technical. Next slide, please. Very important tab is um, terms and legal aspects. So you can see policies here like um, submission policies or preservation policies, but um, most important, uh, how to access the data. So um, there are three properties that give you uh, this information like database access. So can you search for metadata? Data access, can you access the data and how? Is this restricted or maybe closed? And can you um, put data in, so data upload? And this comes together in, in a yeah, elaborate table that you can see here below. Um, and you have to decide yourself what you're looking for. Do you want to receive or download data, or are you more interested to put data in? Next slide, please. Another very important uh, information is about standards. So in this case, there are many standards in use like DOI for the data sets or ORCID for author uh, identification. Um, so PID system in general is a very important standard, but also API standards. So machine readability, in this case, uh, it's not a RESTful API that it used, but rather a OAI PMH. So that could be useful for someone um, yeah, evaluating the repository. And down below, all the met metadata standards are listed. So Dublin Core or DIF. So we list as many as we can. Next slide, please. All this information comes together in an icon system that you can see here, like general information, legal aspect, technical standards, and quality standards and will be visible on our front end. And yeah, so this give, uh, this will give our users hints to evaluate, is this the right repository for my, um, yeah, for, for my um, requirement? Next slide, please. Before all the information is published, there are at least two editors reviewing all the information. So it will be cross-checked. And um, in a positive case, it will be published on the API and all the front end and will be visible and also receive a DOI to be cited as a repository. Next slide, please. This is our complete um, international editorial board. Um, all the people that are involved from different countries like uh, the US um, or from China, and they have different experiences in subjects and languages, and they all are yeah, giving their best to keep um, the records in read 3 data you know, on a very good level. Next slide, please. 
So how can you keep a record up to date? So we are doing our job. So manual checkups by the editorial team. There are also some automated checkups like the core trust seal information will be integrated automatically. But also we are heavily relying on the community to give us uh, information about changes. So in this case, I've integrated the Nano Hub uh, as a science uh, community gateway. And if you push the button, submit a change request, you will uh, see all the, uh, the fields pre-filled and you can change just what you like. And also this uh, request will be reviewed by the editorial board and published uh, on our front end and on the API. That's it from my side. And now I will give over to Dorothea and Yi to show you hands-on what the API is looking like. Hey, Robin, I have some questions. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, once a user requests like, you know, uh, changing sub uh, submission, uh, in that case, uh, like it uh, looks like a uh, uh, older, older one is like a deleted or like a still, you know, keep going on like a versioning, something like that, or how you know it works, you know, after changing, you know, users' data. Uh, that's a very good question. It's not so easy to keep uh, yeah, a publicly available track of all the changes. Um, we are trying on the Coref project to make that more, um, yeah, more clearly. There are some, uh -huh. as of now, there are some hints. Maybe it will be a completely new record if it's if the change is too heavy, and if not, we are trying to use um, yeah some. Um, some references like formally known as or put in some additional information in the remarks to um, and put in data fields of the time and date when something has changed. So, yeah, but we are trying to improve that. Okay, got it. Thanks. Uh, so, Hooven already um, gave you a pretty good impression of uh, what information re 3 data holds. Um, we actually make all of this data accessible via an API. It's a RESTful API that returns results in XML. Uh, and re 3 data provides several interfaces um, where you can get information either on specific repositories or on all indexed repositories. There is also um, an interface that uh, offers query parameters where, can, where you can uh, filter for values of selected um, metadata elements. Uh, can you turn to the next slide, please, Nina? And using the re 3 data API, um, we, we try and make it as easy as possible. The re 3 data database entries are licensed under a very permissive license, uh, CC0. Uh, and this is to ensure that the um, data, re 3 data holds can be reused very easily. The entries are currently based on version 2.2 of the re 3 data metadata schema. Um, the schema is very comprehensive and well documented, so um, you can inform yourself um, on what what you get beforehand. Nina also mentioned that reusing re3 data metadata is a very common use case for the service, and several stakeholders already do this for various purposes, including repository recommendation tools tools for writing data management plans or for monitoring the repository landscape in general. I will now hand over to my colleague, Yi Wang, who will present you uh, with an example of how you can use the re 3 data API. The following part is, it starts out quite technical, but please bear with us. We will explain the process and share some interesting findings with you. Nina, could you go to the next slide, please? Um, so um, through my colleagues and detailed uh, 
informative uh, introduction, you probably have now a general idea what kind of information research data actually offer and where to find our documentation if you actually have a problem, like you could find which elements you're interested. And we're also aware that probably not everyone has experience or that much experience with API query or research data API query. So I think it's very nice to show you a practical demonstration, but sadly with the time that we can only show the step by step right now, but we have very good doc documentation in GitHub, which I just shared in the, uh, the comments. And for those who have very less experience, we would like to you to imagine this whole process like you want to extract information um, of all the cats from your friends, right? So in that scenario, you probably need to firstly get there the address of your friends. And second, you want to define what kind of characteristic about the cats that you're most interested in. And then later on, you probably could do some simple analysis, right? So our use cases are using Research Data API, it's similar, like almost the same things like the, the, uh, that cat scenario we just talked about. So firstly, in this scenario, you have to have set a goal. So here, uh, the aggregator uh, from research data portal, they want to gather in the information about API, such like API endpoint, API type, and also the basic information about the repositories in research data record. And then they have to find out the address of the repository, right? And we find out in documentations there, and we find the address, but we don't have the repository ID for each of them. But later on, we're gonna go in detail about it. And also probably define the requirements. So in this scenario, which is these five elements listed here, in the end, we would have this analysis. And in the next slide, we're gonna see um, the first stage of the preparation. Nina, could you go to the next slide, please? It's gonna take a while. <laughs> so um, all the code is done in R Studio. Um, and the first step is um, loading the package. And um, the second step is basically what we talk about, like have the address of the repository. And we are using the slash repositories as that endpoint to get and uh, to ask our server and um, give the data response. So with this response, we want to read them in XML format. And we ask R to give us the value under the element ID. So the second row basically just telling them, hey, give me the ID of the other repositories. And then later on, we want to pass the ID behind all the other endpoint slash repository. And then we will get this kind of result on the right corner of all the list of um, the address of our repositories. So with our repositories address right now, we could go to the next stage to define the requirements in the next slide. Yeah, so a similar approach exactly like step two. Um, so uh, we write here as a small function, extract repository info and we want to ex get a response as a list. And API is a, right, a the X path is a bit different than the other is because one repository could have a multiple API, right? So we want to ask R to find out the first API and the first API value. And then we give them the second API and second API value. And then we also want to put this list in the data container. We generate in step four here, it's a five um, columns and also gives them sp um, different names here. And now we get all the preposition down, like where we're gonna store and what kind of information we wanna store and also the address. We could go to the next slide. It's a main chord um, of our query um, part. Next slide, please, yeah. So it's a for loop here that we are going through the address of a repository one by one. And also a similar approach like step two, we are asking our server to find the address, the information under the address and pass them in XML. And also we want to count here, like how many APIs they actually have, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to actually bother 
your friends that who doesn't actually have a cat about those cat questions. So if there is an API in that repository uh, record, and then we would extract the information list that we defined in, in step before. And afterwards this R bind is that we want to bind all this list row by row together. In the end, we could have this table here. So in the row two and three, you could say that this repository actually have two different API and also two different API type for sure. And, in the, and with this table, in the next slide, we could have a simple visualization. And here's our GitHub repository. You could check it out already with more example here. And we want to categorize them by different um, API type. Also count the repository um, inside, that, inside that type and also give them different color, make them prettier and also in present them in descending order. So in this graph, we see that the REST API is the most popular one in this data record. Um, yeah, that's um, the practical part uh, from my side. Now back to Nina. All right, thanks so much, Yi. Um, I hope uh, you you are not, uh, yeah, you, you haven't been um, uh, scared or anything by uh, these uh, code rows, but I think, um, yeah, as you can see, there's really usual, uh, like useful information that can be extracted out of Rusi data. And as I understood, also the gateways community is quite technical. So um, I think that uh, some of you uh, can, can go to the GitHub and download the, the um, notebook and also yeah, try to find some information um, within Refree data that you can reuse. And if you have any special uh, requests or questions about this, then please always feel free to contact us. Um, we are happy to help with that. So with this, um, yeah, we still have some time left for questions and um, yeah, I'd like to encourage you if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, you can also just unmute yourself and ask directly. Um, other than that, yeah, you can find in the chat quite a lot of useful links and material which we have mentioned um, around the CORIF project and the service. Um, and I think the recording of the webinar will also be made available later via the Gateways website. Um, and so far, please don't be shy <laughs> and feel free to, to ask any questions if you have some. So, so you are essentially a, a, a repository of repositories, right? Um, which is really cool. This is this is such a neat this is such a neat project, and and I think uh, it looks like you've done very thorough and, and useful work on it. So it's great to hear about. So you were talking about uh, goals toward the end of your project. Are you hoping to uh, find ways to uh, sustain this? Uh, uh, long term so that these uh, these records will be preserved into the into the future beyond the uh, end of your your project term yes so uh, in fact uh, they have already uh, they have already been as i mentioned um, several projects around the service but i think it's important to distinguish that there's the re data service that is um, hosted at kit and is a partner service of data site so that is a sustainable service. And um, the core of project is basically something that comes on top with additional partners and with the goal to enhance the service and to, to put like extra work in, into it to improve and to uh, build new features and offer new, new uh, valuable resources. Um, but the service itself is, is like running. So that is not really touched by the project um, or the project funding. Okay, that yeah, that's great. Thank you. You know mm -hmm. how that's always a question when. Oh yes. <laughs> how long will this data be here? Well, how long will this metadata be here? I thank you mm -hmm. for your answer. That's great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for the this question. Is, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
no, we are aware that uh, I think that every project has to um, reply to that that question, um, uh, which is totally legit because it is a shame if you build something great and then after three years or five years, it just gets buried. <laughs> so, uh, but that's uh, luckily not the case here. So in case um, if you have any other questions, we'll stay here for a bit. Um, other than that, I hope you had a, a, a great conference, maybe spend some time in the gather town rooms <laughs> or at the beach. And I would say uh, if we don't have any further questions, um, yeah, please go ahead and count count your friends' cats. <laughs> and we will share, um, yeah, we will share the slides. So if you follow us on Twitter, you can find us at uh, Refree Data on Twitter. Uh, we will, of course, post our presentation slides there and the recording as soon as it will be available. That might take a little bit until it's um, live, the, the video, but will be available soon. And also, of course, uh, I would like to point out that, yeah, we are a pretty big team and everyone um, has an important impact. So we've put everyone here on the last slide. Okay. I don't know if uh, any other team members, if you have anything left uh, you would like to mention. No, otherwise I would say um, we just close our session for today. Thanks a lot for joining us and for uh, asking your questions. And I hope, yeah, this was useful for you. <laughs>